Hello students, in this video we'll see how to use trigonometric identities to find Taylor series of certain functions. So here's the first example. Let's find the Taylor series for f of x is cosine squared of x centered at a equals zero. One thing we could do with this, since it's cosine squared, is we could say that this is equal to the sum n goes from zero to infinity, negative one to the n, x to the two n over two n factorial, times the sum n goes from zero to infinity, negative one to the n, x to the two n over two n factorial, and we can multiply out each of the terms in the sum term by term. But that's a tremendous amount of work, and it involves lots of pattern recognition. Rather, what we can do is we can use the double angle formula, or the power reduction formula, If we use the power reduction formula, we'll see that cosine squared of x is 1 plus the cosine of 2x over 2, which is 1 half plus 1 half times the cosine of 2x. Now we know the formula for the cosine of x. The cosine of x is given by one of these formulas over here. So we see that cosine squared of x is therefore 1 half plus 1 half times the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then 2x to the 2n over 2n factorial, which we can simplify. We can write this. If we look at the constant term over here, the constant term over here is going to be a 1 and a 1 half and a 1 half. So I'll have a 1, and then I'll start my sum not at 0, but I'll start my sum at 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then 2 to the 2n x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And oftentimes what you'll see written in textbooks or written in journal articles is that when the series has a nice form away from one of the particular coefficients is you can break the series into two parts. So this corresponds to the constant term in my Taylor expansion and these correspond to the higher order terms, the terms of order x or above. So here, the power reduction formula was it helped us to find the Taylor series quickly without having to resort to multiplying using the Cauchy product. Let's look at another example. Let's find the Taylor series for f of x, which is the sine of x times the cosine of 2x. Here, we have the same problem. We could say that this is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. That's one option. That's the sine series, and then the series for cosine of 2x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then 2x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And I could try to multiply these series out, but multiplying these series out would be a lot of work and a lot of pad recognition. Rather, what we can do is we can use the product of sum formula. So if we recall that the sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta, plus the sine of beta, the cosine of alpha, and the sine of alpha minus beta is the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta, minus the sine of beta, the cosine of alpha, and add these expressions together, we see that the sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta is going to be twice the sine of alpha the cosine of beta. So the sine of alpha cosine of beta is half of this expression, so one half the sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta. And that's the power, that's the product to sum formula. And so we can take our function f of x 
and use the product sum formula, right? this is one half. And then my alpha is equal to x, my beta is equal to two x. So I have alpha plus beta, it's gonna be the sine of three x. And then I'll have an x minus 2x, so x minus 2x is just going to be a negative x. So it's the sine of negative x, but the sine of negative x by the fact that the sine is odd is the negative the sine of x. So this is 1 half the sine of 3x minus the sine of x. And we can Taylor expand both these things. This will be 1 half. The first Taylor expansion is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n, and they'll have a 3x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial minus the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then I'll have an x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And if you want, you could simplify these things over here. If you simplify these things into one sum, what you'll see is you have a 1 half the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, then I'll have a negative 1 to the n, then I'll have a 3, I'll have a 3 to the 2n plus 1, minus 1, x to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial. And this series representation is the Taylor series expansion for sine of x, cosine 2x, and we see from both these examples that using a trigonometric identity is very helpful because it can relate more complex trigonometric expressions to sine of alpha x and cosine of beta x, and then you can simply plug in alpha x and beta x into the corresponding Taylor series to simplify and write down your solution. Thank you very much.